Right, now we can start to finalise the image and start processing it and making it look quite sexy. So, let's address what other problems we've got. Yes, we've got thermal noise, etc. down here in the blacks, which we can quite readily address by just going to the black slider and double clicking the word blacks like that and so that has now reduced the blacks back down to their default zero thrown a bit more contrast in and uh, darkened these blacks down a tad and so now we've we've got rid of a certain amount of the magenta noise in there now we've not finished there not by a long shot but we also need to address the problem with excess magenta over here in the um, um, this side of the, the sensor over here on the uh, right especially up at the top and basically this is caused by well, I always think it's where the voltage comes into the sensor yeah because any form of thermal noise always that's present in a sensor um, when you shoot a black frame when you shoot a black frame um, in other words do like a, a 4 or a 5 or a 6 minute exposure in manual mode on your camera with the lens cap on and then actually take a look at what the raw file looks like and you'll see all sorts of noise that is your thermal noise and read noise and uh, when we actually do um, an exposure at night that uses um, I think Nikon core oh well I know Nikon call it long exposure noise reduction um, I forget what Canon call it um, might be dark frame noise reduction um, but that's ostensibly what you do you take the shot and then the shutter closes and the camera immediately turns itself on again and um, but doesn't open the shutter but it turns the sensor back on for exactly the same amount of time as your shot lasted and then it takes the original exposure and this dark frame and subtracts the dark frame from the original exposure hence we actually remove the thermal noise and uh, the shot noise from the from the actual exposure but if you do like a four minute exposure um, using long exposure noise reduction or dark frame noise reduction um, your actual exposure will last eight minutes um, but of course we can't do this um, can't adopt that technique when we're actually photographing the night sky because it moves so we have to adopt one approach for the sky and another approach for the foreground it all become more apparent when we move on to more complicated shots of the milky way in the night sky and uh, foreground images but um, so don't stress too much about it now but what we do need to do is address the thermal noise over on this right side of the camera we've got a little tiny bit over here and i'm just going to cheat I'm not going to um, do anything too fancy. I'm going to bring in a graduated filter with zero adjustments dialed into it. And then I'm going to add a little bit of the opposite of magenta, which is green. And now, basically, the right side of the image looks a little bit more acceptable. I'm going to pull it in just a little tiny bit and quite frequently when you do this you'll find you get it it looks a little bit light so what you might have to do is take out a little tiny bit of exposure something rather akin to plot minus two or minus three minus four minus three looks a little bit better to me and i'll go ahead and click done um having said that i should have gone ahead and click new instead and uh, we'll bring a new one sort of over there and that will go slightly green the actual magenta over here is not as prevalent as it was over on the opposite side of the image um 
so that will be all right um, I don't really want to tickle the exposure there um, otherwise we run the risk of it going a little bit on the dark side and um, I'll just turn the contrast down a wee bit okay so now my thermal noise is pretty much taken care of um, what are we going to do next should I turn the blacks down a little bit more yes I think we will okay so now that's thrown us into um, a black silhouette basically of the um, <laughs> foreground um, but now we are painfully aware of the fact that the, this corner especially and maybe that one are going a little bit too dark so what we're going to do is come into lens corrections and obviously we're going to go remove chromatic aberration which is something we should do straight from the get-go and that always needs to be done and then we're going to go enable profile corrections and these adobe profiles are for the most part i find disgusting yeah where they've got them from and how they've made them i have no idea but they are absolutely appalling now i don't particularly want to uh, bring to bear any distortion control because i've got no horizontals and verticals so i'm going to take the distortion control off see how much how much pick how many pixels we were losing out of the image and um, just through having that distortion control on mm, don't need it but this vignetting this is just appalling i mean it hasn't neutralized the vignetting it's it's gone it's gone completely mad in the opposite direction and i usually find that i want it somewhere around between 15 and 25 and if i look at these corners here um i find that not too bad so 22 ish that's not bad okay and uh, that'll do for that i'm going to go and get an adjustment brush very quickly and all i'm going to do is go sort of minus 0.6 minus 0.7 and we're just going to come in here and we're just going to darken these blacks down i think i'll put the auto mask on um take the density up to 100 and uh, just keep brushing away and then it doesn't matter because i've got the auto mask on doesn't matter if I overlap the sky a little bit um, we're not going to uh, affect the sky at all unless we actually take the crosshairs onto um, the actual sky itself so there we go and uh, we've pretty much negated all the problems with um, that um, noise in the blacks in that silhouetted foreground and um, we pretty much got that sorted and there we go i'm rather liking that um do we want to do any more titty baiting well you can go on adjusting these images forever in a day but what we really want to do is to try and get this milky way to pop and one of the best ways is again with the radial filter tool and um, i'm just going to hold down the alt key and reset it and i'm going to drag a radial filter in but i'm going to keep it as an ellipse and i'm just going to rotate it till it's sort of running along the axis of the milky way and i'm going to pull it down and i think we'll pull it down to there and we'll keep it centered here so the adjustments that i make will fade from um uh, yeah we're on the uh, wrong way around it needs to be an inverted mask so it's it's basically working from well there you go there's the mask that is the mask that it will work underneath so it's, it's working inside the confines of the mask of the filter outline not outside so all the effects are all the changes i affect inside the uh filter now with these adjustments will take place inside it and they will only affect the milky way right so what do we need to do i need to bump the highlights a little bit and that just helps the milky way stand out don't go mad 
I also might want to boost the whites a little tiny bit, not too much. Now we come to the clarity slider, and I might add a little bit of clarity, 30, 31, 32's plenty, little tiny bit of dehaze, and now that just makes it, oh that's too much, bring it back, bring it back, there we go, sort of around 15 to 18, and that's looking quite good, isn't it? So we're going to go ahead and click done, and uh, mm, yeah, maybe, I'm going to add another one, um, simple way, go and activate that, so we've got our mask active again, our radial filter active again, sorry, and go duplicate, mm, yeah, but we're not going to leave it there, don't worry, and I'm going to make it a lot smaller, and then I'm going to pick it up, and I'm going to drag it down to here. Yeah. Now, if I just move off, that's really made the... What is virtually the galactic center? It's really made it pop. And uh, I'm quite pleased with that. I um, just want to check that the filter itself is not... Um, having too much of a derogatory effect anywhere else and I think I'm just going to turn the highlights in that filter down just a little bit maybe take the contrast down just a little bit I want to emphasize the brightness I want to emphasize the color but I don't want to emphasize the contrast I want to try and keep things looking relatively real and I think I'm going to take the clarity value down to about 20 and we'll just watch it disappear just want to keep things nice and subtle yeah and might take that dehaze down to well let's see probably about there 13 yeah okay so i'm quite liking that i don't know about you but i think that's quite cool so now we've actually processed our Milky Way raw files. It's not been too much of a trial or too much of a tribulation, has it? Um, we have got, we need to go and click done on that, yes, and we'll also notice we've got black clipping, but the black clipping is only in that silhouetted foreground, so basically it's nothing to worry about. We haven't got any clipping anywhere in the sky, either in the blacks or the whites. And I'm quite happy with that image. So what we're now going to do is start to process this image to reduce the... Oh, we don't want to see that. Um, let's come back to a one-to-one -one, uh, one -one view. And uh, there we go. Have we kept uh, the colours in our stars? We're not going to properly see them in the Milky Way. But yes, I think we're quite happy. I might make one or two adjustments to it. But... Um, we'll do all that inside the next lesson so I'll see you